get to our guest, please. Who is the man that would risk his neck for the man? Shut up! Chris Arps. Um, I want to get back to this issue of flooding for a minute, but I do want to say that also in the um, short list there, I had a soundbite from Laura Ingram, who said exactly what I basically said yesterday in, in my soapbox, is why the hell is the GOP cowering in the corner, sucking their thumbs, afraid of shutting the government down? And I'm going to talk to John Shimkus about that, the congressman, when I have him on next hour, because... I don't know. You know, I'm sure it, I'm sure there were people affected by it. But with the last time the government shut down, I didn't notice. You know, the only reason I knew it is the, the TV coverage of the monuments in D.C. where Barack Obama put metal gates up so people right. couldn't go to open air monuments in yeah. D.C. to try to make a point. And it failed miserably. I don't know what we're afraid of. I think this is just another example of the Republican Party leaders in Congress of being reactionary and you know, we know that this is going to happen, that they're going to blame the Republicans for shutting down the government, but we never have an answer to counter it. Then, you know, that's that's what we should do. We know that's what they're going to come up with. Let's come up with some answers to to uh, to show the public why we're not responsible for shutting the government down instead yeah. of being reactionary all the time. Yeah, I, I, I would I tend to agree with that. And, and hopefully the argument is that, well, next wait till September. So we'll, we'll we'll see where that goes. Let me get back to the river stuff for a minute because you walked in in the middle of that conversation. I know you you heard some of it. Um, you, you you've been you haven't been impacted by any of this, have you? So uh, far, no, not yet. Like Jay, poor Jason can't get to his house right now. Uh, it's a mess out there. No, I live uh, U City, which is I guess is high off the ground, so we, we haven't had any flooding. Right? Yeah. It, it's uh, it, we were talking earlier about what the problem gets to here and. Uh, Tim Jones had suggested yesterday that it, in other towns where they've built up their levees, mm -hmm. it it forces the water into a nar more narrow right. stream. The, normally, the, the, the reason you have a river basin, it's been described to me, is uh, and the soil so fertile is that when the when the when the river floods, it right. has a place to go, right. and right. then it eases back into its banks when it's not flooding and it moves on, and when you build up the banks too high, it builds up speed as it heads down, but it backs up upriver because it's gone into a narrower stream, yeah. and I suspect that's got something to do, uh, if Tim is correct, with what they're seeing maybe down in, in uh, Eureka and um, Valley Park for the second time in 18 months. I mean, it's just unbelievable. Let me get to a couple phone calls here. Who They called in about this issue. David, go ahead. Yes, sir. Uh, just a, a quick reference point. Uh, back in, you know, 18 months ago, Valley Park was flooded out, and of course before that it was in 93, but since then, since the 93 flood, uh, I used to work in that area, and Valley Park put a levy up. And in my actual honest opinion, I think that's where a lot of our problem is stemming from because never before had 44 and 55 been shut down before. Yeah, but but Valley Park's flooded right now. Well, the uh, levee didn't work. Yeah, <laughs> you, you might say it's uh, karma. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know, da David. I appreciate you pointing that out. Yeah, I, I saw them put the flood wall up there yesterday and. Yeah, I mean, I can remember in the spring of 94, just after the water receded in October, November right. of 93, and I remember in the fall, in the spring of 94 when the ground was still saturated right. and we got just the slightest bit of winter runoff, things started flooding again, yeah. particularly down uh, off of um, off Highway 30 mm -hmm. and um, in that area. And that's just because the ground was so saturated. Yep. But but uh, I don't know. I don't know if, if, if the... If, you can specifically blame that on a levee uh, in Valley Park. If Valley Park flooded, it didn't work. Steve, you're on the radio. Hey, Mark. How you doing, bud? Hey, good. What's up? Hey, I have a solution. I hope there's an engineer listening, and if so, I wish they would call and explain if this would be wrong or impractical or not. Instead of building a levee up, I say you go down. If you trench out, like, um, say, 10 foot, I'm just using that as a round figure, by 5 foot wide on each side of the river, and just hit the spots where it's prone to flooding, like Valley Park, Eureka. And you, you, you extend it out a little bit further than that, so there is room for a runoff. Whenever the water comes down in a gush like that, you might still have some localized flooding. I mean, you're not going to stop all the water. 
but it will su- substantially lower the amount of flooding that there is where it, the cleanup isn't as, as devastating, um, the financial cost isn't as devastating or whatever. I was wondering if there was a way they could do that and then, you know, kind of work on a long-term project ap- after they get something in place that um, they can look at and say, okay, well, this is doing this much. Maybe we should go a little bit further out or a little bit longer or whatever. And there's, that's a way they could stop it. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe somebody will call in on that, Steve, but I appreciate the advice. Pro- probably the minute they wanted to go in there with a couple of shovels, somebody <laughs> would discover some rare snail darter that you couldn't dig for, and then that'd be the end of it. Or you'd have to have some environmental impact yeah. study yeah. that they have to study it for two or three years. But, and then it might be too late, right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I know. I, I, I'm, I can't believe that they wouldn't, that that wouldn't have been yeah. something that, that would have been considered yeah. uh, before. But for, my experience with those levees is that they're they're built some distance from the river. I mean, they give the river room to spread out, right. but the uh, the goal is to keep it contained within that wider basin. And um, You know, a good friend of mine, David Stokes, is the executive director of the Great Rivers Habitat Alliance, and he has become basically kind of an expert on flooding and the river. And the, the two reasons he says that we're having all this recurring, we're having 100-year floods every two every years, two, yeah. is because, one, is all of the development that's been done on these floodplains. And two, he says these different communities up and down the river are cheating on the levees that they are that they can build. Okay. You know, they may have like 10 foot is a levee, but they're cheating and raising it up to 12 and 13, 14 feet to help their communities. But... You know, downriver, that's flooding the other community. So those are the two points that he's made That's that's that he feels that's what's causing this. Right. Yeah, it, it could be. Let me get to a couple more phone calls here since this uh, topic seems to be what people want to talk about. Richard, welcome to the program. Hello. Hi there. Yeah, I've lived in Eureka since 1958. And I can tell you that this river floods. It's flooded always. But, yes, we've had some astronomical floods here. The biggest thing is... All up and down the Merrimack Basin, this, it's, everybody's going west. There's a lot of building. They're building shopping centers. They're building more subdivisions and developments and paving over ground, which increases the runoff right outside of Eureka here. They, they put in a big development over in Jefferson County. Now, that didn't impact us, but it certainly impacted downriver. And the one thing they also did was blast it off a hill and filled in probably a, I would say, close to an 800 or 900-acre field, filled it all the way up to above flood level because they were going to build houses there. So that takes away runoff from the flood where plane. that river can go. Yeah. Yeah, so it sounds like a, a combination of things, and you've got a long history down there. I I appreciate your thoughts on that, Jeff. I got about a minute. What's on your mind? Real quick, my father is 82 years old. Just celebrated his birthday, and he grew up in Valley Park. And he said at the time they were doing it, that landfill that they put in there at the old Peerless Park was going to push water into Valley Park, and it did in '93. And so they had to build a levee, and he's always said there's nowhere for that water to go. Hmm. Everybody keeps building up around yeah. those rivers, and then the lo- the, whoever's got the low space is going to get deluged. That's uh, that's an interesting perspective on that going back a number of years, Jeff. Thank you for that. I'll tell you what. Let's get to a break real quick. Chris Arps is my guest. He's going to stick around with us for the next segment, as usual, on this Tuesday. 314-969-9797. At the top of the hour, we've got uh, Congressman John Shimkus, who's going to check in with us as we talk more about a potential health care vote. And they're on the air with the White House press briefing even as we speak. So uh, updates on all of that. Stick around to the Mark Cox Show. This is the Mark Cox Show. Air Comfort Service Heating and Cooling. Weather with Dave Murray. How about lots of sunshine now? It's still a little breezy, even a little bit on the windy side. 69 for the high. Tonight.